What's poppin' people, it's Dante. Just getting my morning started here in Philadelphia outside of City Hall. Check out that beautiful clock tower standing tall. You know, after all, maybe when it's all said and done, you have all the riches in the world, the millions and billions and trillions of dollars. What is there to do in this world, in this lifetime? Perhaps to create wonderful works of art. Looking at the architecture and construction of this building here, I am absolutely inspired, right? The things that we leave behind are what we have left of humanity itself. And this building here is just amazing. I mean, I pass through these halls each day with wonder and awe. And I think that, you know, there's something about architecture and it's sort of structural integrity, right? Like where this building will stand tall, I feel like forever and ever. And it just allows me to it just it allows me to appreciate the things that we have created in this world, right? Where you look back towards this landscape, it's, you know, mostly glass buildings, offices and things. But there's something special here in this part of town in Center City when you pass through and you just get lost in the detail, you know, where God is in the detail. Check out this beautiful sculpture here i haven't made a photo of it in the morning like this before so you know what's amazing with street photography right and just photographing each day is you can walk the same lane and always find something to uplift with a photograph in a new way um you know where the lighting changes right i have this spotlight here hitting my face um and it's also hitting the face of that sculpture there in a new way and I think it's just an exciting medium photography because of its physical nature where I'm moving my body through the world and recognizing life and championing it with a camera. What is a camera? A camera is a magic black box that can capture light and paint with it. <laughs> it's a very special tool that I wield each day. I think to fuel your lust for life through the medium of photography is a wise way to consider it. Where street photography is merely an ethos, it's a way of doing things. It's a way for you to go out in the world and to discover. Who are we? At Zen Cleaning. We're proud to be insured, licensed, and bonded, giving you complete confidence in our work. Our commitment to excellence shines through in the skilled teams we bring to your beautiful home and workspace. Throughout the Philadelphia area, we're dedicated to setting a higher standard for professional cleaning. Hey, look, great advertising, Zen Cleaning, phl.com. I think that this is a great, great name, Zen. Zen focus, removing things from your life, I think is the way forward where yeah, I think subtracting all the superfluous things and sort of focusing becomes this sort of interesting thing where I think focusing is merely having no distractions. So keeping your phone on airplane mode, not checking your email, not being on social media, sort of like all these little like basic things that I think we, we kind of just get accustomed to doing each day, but actually removing them will allow you to focus. And so with that, I say certainly delete your Instagram. If you're doing street photography, I highly suggest starting a WordPress, WordPress blog. Um, just go to wordpress.org, host your first name, last name, .com on bluehost.com. And yeah, I mean, just start publishing your work there. I also like using Google Photos as a way for me to back up the work and sort of upload it to the cloud and have it so that I can access it anywhere. It seems to be a good solution for backing things up. I use the iPad Pro. Um, don't use any of the case and the stylus, the keyboard and stuff. Just hand hold the iPad Pro and use the Photos app with the USB-C dongle. You can import your photos directly to the Photos app and cull through the work extremely fast. Using a Ricoh GR3 with the high contrast black and white small JPEG settings allows this really quick workflow where everything imports and uploads fast and they become aesthetically beautiful straight from the camera so there's no need to process the files which i believe is critical for me to thrive as a creative and a photographer because in the past using lightroom big cameras lenses and systems that are slow and honestly in my opinion old school with the raw files yeah i would just get bored of it and not have as much 
perhaps motivation and inspiration, whatever you want to call it, to go out there and shoot because it would just become tedious and boring. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, with street photography, maybe it's merely just about having fun at the end of the day and just embracing the spirit of play, your childlike inner curiosity about things. Um, you know, finding yourself in a state of wonder and awe, sort of treat yourself like a tourist in your hometown, I think is a good notion, right? Where you go out there and you treat each day anew, even if you walk the same lane every single day that you may find to be mundane, I promise you there's something there. You have to dig deeper with the medium of photography and perhaps to get to the root of the medium itself, we must ask this very simple question. What will reality manifest to be in a photograph? When I raise my camera to this particular building at P mode, snap focus infinity, <laughs> camera settings <laughs> I'm currently looking at a reflection of this beautiful clock tower that sits atop of this city hall building here the oldest municipal building the biggest municipal building the biggest the oldest municipal building in the country crafted by the Scottish free right masons thanks masons you guys did a great job here um, masons if you're watching this good job um, but yeah I'm just looking at the reflection of the clock tower here I've you know, I've never noticed this reflection. It's through this window here, and I don't, I don't know. I mean, there's something about just walking the same route each day and seeing the small nuances and change within your town, your city, your village, wherever you may be. I mean, see differently, look at things differently, and try to play with the same thing each day. Right, where I have this clock tower in the city that I photograph very often. And I feel as though I can photograph it endlessly until the day I die in a new way. Here's the Wanamaker building. I think this building here is incredibly beautiful, the interior and the exterior. But my favorite is the Wanamaker organ that sits inside every day except for Sunday. It, it plays at 12 and 5.30. I highly suggest listening to it. You know, where I find that the music that we listen to is critical to consider and, you know, maybe listening to music that sort of gives you vigor and sort of vitality, sort of powerful feelings is a good one. Um, so just be mindful. A lot of the times we listen to music to sort of fill the void maybe in times of silence where perhaps embracing the silence is wise and finding places where you can actually listen to music in public is nice. I like the Wanamaker organ. I mean, it's one of these gems, right? The king of organs here in the city. I have free live performances every single day. So that's where I like to go and listen, right? And to sort of just gaze and admire the beautiful architecture. You know, there's something about these, this like eagle statue in the center with these feathers that were wrought by hand, built of bronze. I mean, it's incredible the things that we have here in the city of Philadelphia. And I simply just want to see as many beautiful things before I die. And I think that I can find endless opportunity to uplift uh, things with my photography here in this uh, amazing place. There's Benjamin Franklin right there on that sculpture. And yeah, perhaps to uh, embrace... Wow, this is... Embrace our forefathers, our founding fathers, embrace the sort of mindset of Benjamin Franklin is a good one. Benjamin Franklin being one of America's greatest inventors and thinkers. Yeah, I think he, uh, he is someone to, uh, to look at for inspiration. I think actually anyone that's in this uh, sort of vein of history in America all of the founding fathers thinking of Jefferson. I mean, I love passing down Market Street specifically because this is actually where Benjamin Franklin lived. He lived down at Second and Market. There's also the building where Thomas Jefferson penned the Declaration of Independence, the Old City, Independence Hall, etc. So yeah, I think that uh, sort of using your imagination, thinking about the um, historic places around the city of Philadelphia, if you're here, 
is I think a fun way to just walk around and contemplate things. It's like, I look at this building and I'm like, this is just amazing, wow, you know, so beautiful. Let me photograph it, let me uplift it, let me cherish it forever for perhaps a photograph can outlive us. You know, I don't know if, you know, maybe nothing lasts forever, but maybe if it's, maybe our photographs will. Who knows? You know, you never know. I think maybe the uh, beauty of the small JPEG is it's small file size and ease, ease of sharing and downloading and uploading. And maybe that's just a wise way to go forward in terms of longevity and thinking super, super far into the future. I think embracing artificial intelligence is wise. This morning I woke up thinking about the founding fathers actually and just chat GPTing them and like looking at famous quotes from Thomas, Je uh, from Thomas Jefferson, George Washington and these guys. Just uh, fueling my curiosity, right? Where we can read books, we can learn this way, but actually using chat GPT as a way to speed things up and to sort of uh, fuel your own curiosity is wise. I also like using the visualization tool one of my favorite things to use with the Dolly 3 system actually is I like to think of someone like I'll think of let's say Achilles right and I'll say make a marble sculpture of Achilles in a minimalist gallery with lighting inspired by Caravaggio and it becomes this aesthetically beautiful depiction I don't know what it is it's just like a simple and amazing solution I found in terms of typing in you know, these keywords, right? And sort of looking at a marble sculpture with the lighting inspired by Caravaggio, right? The chiaroscuro, the light and shadow, you know, these things are maybe interesting in terms of photography to think about as well, especially using high contrast black and white. I think we should look at the light itself a lot of the times when I'm photographing during the golden hour and things. I try to find areas in the city where the light is striking and even photographing towards the sun what I like to do with my Rico is increase my exposure compensation plus 2, plus 1.7, plus whatever and simply point and shoot directly into the sun. Something I'm trying to get good at and something I'm actually trying to work with more. It seems that during uh, the middle of the day this is a good time to play with that sort of uh, camera setting. and. Um, yeah, other thoughts about uh, street photography. Um, look at the beat of, the, you know, follow yourself or f follow the beat of the street, right? Look at the feet, look at the dance, look at the way people sort of move and groove through the, the sidewalks themselves. And um, yeah, find yourself in tune with the rhythm. You know, a lot of the times I'm looking ahead, I'm looking at the beat of the, of the feet and how they're stepping and, you know, the sort of different movement patterns of people and just observing human behavior generally. Um, I think actually when you walk the same lane every day and you observe your hometown or wherever you may be, you'll recognize that same guy that's sort of uh, standing by the standing by the uh, street vendor or the street cleaner or the janitor or the security officer, whoever. And you become in tune with all these things. And I think that's interesting to just recognize the patterns in uh, in the world. Also, if you have nothing to photograph, remember that you can make selfies. So here we have uh, the Rico set to P mode, sort of uh, just single point autofocus. I have it at plus 0.7 exposure compensation because it's a bit dark using the LED lights here. I try to focus on my eye. Maybe this is gonna be a little bit too bright. Oh, it's actually perfect. That's an awesome one. And yeah, I'll sometimes like gaze the diff uh, different ways and just sort of play with the way that I can make a selfie or a self portrait, if you will. It seems like, uh, you know, as street photographers, we oftentimes photograph strangers candidly on the streets and things. How about we actually embrace the self portrait? It's like, uh, yeah, why not? I mean, honestly, the photographs we make of ourselves are cool too so yeah i think everything's fair game with this kind of thing and uh yeah maybe the selfie is a good one and architecture shots are fun too where you know when i'm photographing on the street what i like to do is so i'll set the snap focus to infinity and you know what i'll do is i'll look up 
and I'll photograph these sort of like look up shots, looking at the architecture. I like to move, see how I'm moving my camera like this? I like to move my camera and even just move my physical body more when I'm photographing and then look down at wherever I was photographing and make a photograph macro, right? Look at the grand architecture, look up at the sky, look up at the buildings that are standing so high and then go down and low and look at the um, things that grow in between the cracks on the street and uplift those moments as well. I think everything becomes infinitely fascinating when you wield a camera in hand and to recognize this power I think is critical. You know, the point is go out there, explore endlessly, walk more, be outdoors, you know, where to be indoors is merely a bore anyway. Um, embrace the spirit of play and recognize the impermanent nature of things. Thinking of the texture of this subway sign here and the sort of rusting and, imp you know, the little graffiti and things here, the wabi-sabi approach is a good one as well. I like to walk through different places like the malls. Seems to be a good way to walk in Philadelphia specifically. We have lots of indoor places like this, this uh, fashion district mall here. I'm just entering through the Jefferson Station side. We have the convention center there. There's also a tunnel that goes directly to the Reading Terminal and yeah, what I like to do is find little games to play when I'm photographing. So here on this escalator, there's this like light down there. And sometimes people pass through the door and I'm like, ah, I want to try to get a good one of someone coming through the door or whatever, like a silhouette in the background. Like there's always something that you can try over and over again, right? Where like repetition, I think is critical in street photography, sort of finding things that, uh, interest you in trying to make that shot or that picture or whatever that you've always dreamt of where I studied the corner outside of City Hall for many months observing the patterns of the pigeons how do they fly where do they fly at what time are they flying what angle can I can I uh, photograph these pigeons at you know trying different vantage points trying different days of the week I tried for many months to photograph this particular scene and what happened was I was looking at the way in which the birds flew by City Hall being this very iconic and beautiful building I was looking to capture a moment actually where the bird flew above William Penn sitting on top of the tower and I actually wound up achieving this goal through repetition right where fortune favors the prepared fortune favors those that are actually making more pictures so when when you're out there and you make more pictures you walk more you observe more you study more the streets right where you don't need to study the books just study the street and uh, photograph on repeat and ultimately you will get lucky <laughs>